Hey everybody, Michael McGregor here with Wyco Resiliency. Welcome to the canning show. This is part one of a four part series that I'll be doing on the YouTube page for not only for my MAG, my mutual assistance group um, that I'm a part of, but also for everyone on YouTube for Wyco Resiliency. You know, um, I'm just gonna start off with the usual. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and share um, the episodes. Feel free to comment, ask questions. I'll answer them if I can. Um, if you want to act like a fool, be disrespectful. Um, plain and simple, that's a band hammer. Not going to play that game on YouTube anymore. I did it when I used to do a um, when I used to do a uh, uh, fitness uh, nutrition page. There was a lot of uh, basically very bored individuals that they seem to kind of get off on just being douchebags on the YouTube. Won't be tolerated on my page, plain and simple. Be respectful to one another, be kind to one another. Um, this is my house. You're here by my choice, okay? So please conduct yourself professionally and like you're a friend. Okay, but that being said, I'm not going to carry on too much about that. But let's talk about canning. So there's different ways that you can can. Um, one of them is pressure canning. I don't do that. I do um, water canning, water bath. And when doing water baths, oh, my book is right here. Look at that. It's like I'm almost ready. So <clears throat> this is an old book. This is old. This was this was this was a gift to me. But the the blue book. The Guide to Home Canning and Freezing. This is Bell. This is by far the best. Um, don't mess around with any other books. Just go straight to Bell. Um, this is copyright. This is edition 32, and this is 1993. So they go over all the different ways of canning, all the stuff, all the good things. This is what we do for canning choosing the right containers and like I said there's pressure canning and then there's also water bath I prefer the water bath so um, but hands down this is what you're gonna need so you're gonna need the boiling water bath bath canner okay the bath canner the bath canner it's basically a giant ass pot okay this is your bath canner this is gonna what you want to get, okay? Because that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna do your water bath. I keep all I keep everything that belongs there. There's one thing I have. I put it somewhere. Oh. Okay. I keep all that stuff inside the canner. So this is your canning. This holds your cans, okay? And cans, we need basically glass jars. So you can dip that in. There is an actual formal name to that. And let's see if they have a formal name. Hey, they really don't have one. Um, they have um, the jar funnel. Jar funnel. And a doo -doo. The jar funnel is wide mouth, so it goes into your jars, so you don't get messy rims. And you see, here's the rim. I rub the rim, okay? So, you want to keep the outside of it clean because you are going to be putting container lids on top of these, okay? Dump your ingredients, take that, keeps the outside clean. I like wide mouth, so I use the wide mouth lids. Sure tight lids, seals up to 18 months. So that's good to know. This is a magnet. I don't have any lids around and I really don't want to crack this open, but your nice little lids, that, that sticks to them. 
so you can set them on top. You put your ring around it, tighten your ring, pop that off. That keeps your filthy, grubby, non-sanitized hands off of them. So this is basically, um, this is a non-metallic, well, it's not really a spatula, but I've always kind of used this. Maybe it's not the right way, but to help things on the side and help pack it down, okay? With, real, with a lot of boiling water, you would have the glass in there. You would have the rest of them. And then obviously there would be boiling water and you would set this in. There's two ways you can actually do this. And I'll bring the camera over, I think. So you can set that in. But I'm going to bring the camera over. Okay, look at that. See how that sets right in there? Okay, that sits there. So with all the cans in here, the glass jars, I don't have two hands. I would grab these together, lift it up, fold it in, and then lower it into the boiling water. So that's why we would use that. And that's a very important part, okay? Yes, we're moving things around, don't mind that. I don't know if I'm gonna oh, go totally crazy with the editing and moving out things like that. The other thing that's extremely important and what do they call this thing? They call it a jar lifter. Wow. Tongs. Hot jar. You're pulling it out of the water. Pull it out of the water. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So if this is in here, you got a lot of boiling water in there. You would reach in, pull it out. And the thing that a lot of people do is they forget that when they pull the jars out, actually have a towel laid out and put your nice hot jars on the towel, let them sit. That's essentially the tools you'll be using to do a basic canning. Don't panic over canning. It, I mean, it, it's almost foolproof. If you end up canning something and the lids don't actually, um, oh, higher clump. 25, 30 minutes is usually what I let them boil for to get that, um, that suction, that vacuum created. They have other formulas that you can follow. They have stuff for acidity. Um, you wanna make sure that you have enough head space between um, the lid and the top of the jar. You're gonna wipe the jars off when you put the lids on. So this book, like I said, it talks all about this. It's step-by-step -step guides um, don't mind the sniffles I'm sorry it's not the uh, cerveza flu it is honestly allergies I've been cleaning the living tar out of my living area and there's a lot a lot of a lot of what do you call that there's a lot of um, dust so they even have canning tomatoes step by step. And as you can see, my mom actually put notes in here. Um, half a teaspoon for a pint and a tablespoon lemon juice. Half a teaspoon of um, half a teaspoon for a pint and a tablespoon of lemon juice. Um, she adds to the tomatoes, I believe, to kind of I guess neutralize it. I don't know why. I'll actually have to ask her why she did, why she added that note. Um, I learned how to can from my mom and my uh, dad. And he taught me the trick on when you make jams and jellies. You don't actually have to throw them in the water boil. You can actually, because they're so hot, when you add the, this is actually jalapeno. This is jalapeno blackberry jam. Um, it's going to go in there hot, hold it upside down. The heat from the jam and the jelly will create that suction. And this has been opened. I mean, this is good stuff right here. Except for it's sugary and it's stuck. Mmm, that's wonderful. This is still good. This was done 
quite a few months ago. And I probably should get a little hot rag and wipe that down so it seals better. So right there, goes back to the refrigerator. I was using that earlier. So that's what there is to canning. So fairly easy as long as you have the tools. I would start with a basic uh, pickling recipe. Go with green beans, you can go with uh, pickling cucumbers, um, jalapenos, um, you can start. Uh, I don't wanna really get into fermentation just yet. That's gonna be actually episode four when we do a fermentation video. Um, but green beans, green beans are easy. Um, onions, green beans, some garlic clove, your brine, and pickle it. One thing I do a lot is daikon radish and carrots. Um, that's used in a lot of Vietnamese meals. I do that probably, I make a batch of that probably once every three months, and I do three to four big quart jars of it. Um, I use it for my uh, banh mi sandwiches, which is a uh, basically a Vietnamese pork belly sandwich. Fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I love banh mi, I'm sorry, I do. Um, let's see, salsa. You can make salsa. Um, I do that because there was a guy that used to watch my video and every time I said salsa, he would freak out and post in caps, salsa, learn to say it right. I don't know how to say salsa. We're having fun. Lighten up, Francis. So, salsa. I don't know how you make your salsa. I do uh, serrano peppers, onion, garlic, a little bit of lime juice, um, juice from actual lime. Or you can use concentrated lime juice, it doesn't matter. Um, Roma tomatoes, a few other like beef, like the beef steak, beef cake, beef steak. Not beef cake tomatoes, beef steak. Puree those up in a food processor or like a ninja. Get it all together, pour them out, and I get five to six pint jars of different salsas. Um, depending on, my wife doesn't like really, really spicy, I do. So I make different batches and I add extra spice to the last batch and three of the six is really, really hot. I haven't done really, really hot lately, but I used it in the past, I mean, scorching hot, like Dave's Insanity Sauce hot, and like a tablespoon of it to, yeah. I don't do that anymore. My taste buds have changed, so I can't handle heat like I used to. So salsa, um, pickled green beans, uh, I've done fermentation. So and on this show, we'll go over the salsa I make for canning. And then anything you want to can, you can pretty much can. I mean, that's your gardens. You're going to do that. One thing I am getting ready to do is um, I pulled the last of my tomatoes off. Today is October 21st, I believe. So today's October 21st. I pulled the last of my tomatoes off the plant because it, it, the season's done here. They're green tomatoes. Pickled green tomatoes, anyone? Yeah, that's right. So I will actually be doing pickled green tomatoes. Be making an interesting brine that uh, I saw some lady do actually on the YouTubes. Uh, I like the way she does her brine, so I'm going to incorporate that into my next batch to see how it goes. So, and later on down the road when I start setting them up, I'll actually film the process for doing that so you can see how I do pickled green tomatoes. And maybe when you're left over at the end of the season with too many green tomatoes, you'll go, hey, I remember that recipe. That way you're not throwing away food. We don't want to be throwing away any of our harvest. When we used to grow tomatoes, back when my parents had their house in the big garden, we would get 10, we would get hundreds of pounds of tomatoes and my mom and dad would spend an entire day just steaming, peeling, getting them ready for tomato sauces, just canned tomatoes, canned tomato sauce, canned salsa, all that good stuff, they would just get it done in one day. The, my mom would also do a lot of canning of the zucchini. They didn't throw anything away. I mean, a, baskets, baskets of vegetables they would give to their neighbors, um, give to me and my wife. Um, 
that's how their backyard garden in Highlands Ranch in Colorado, that's how bountiful it was. So if your gardens aren't producing that much, reevaluate what you're doing and how you're doing your gardening. And remember, gardening is a daily thing. It's not all day. But it's a daily thing. You got to go out there. You got to weed. You got to trim. You got to trim the suckers off so that the plant grows and becomes um, more energetic, as my grandfather would say. So you can't just plant your stuff, water it, walk away. You got to water. You got to weed. You got to care to it. You got to look for the aphids. You got to look for the bugs, the mites, all sorts of that stuff. Learn to use wood chips as a composting. Yeah, that'll give you black dirt. So I know this is a canning video, but canning and gardening go hand in hand. Other than that, um, we're going to move on to part two of the canning show. And here's the funny thing. Episodes two and three were filmed before this episode. So there's that. Um, think of this as the Star Wars of canning, where we start with episode four five and then six and then many many years later we'll go to one two three and then we'll wait more decades to do seven eight nine there's that but with that thank you for watching Wyco resiliency canning remember resiliency for a stronger community watch your six i'm michael malcolm mcgregor i'm out peace all